Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is a compilation of a series of videos that we posted recently showing the renovation of a 1930s semi-detached property. We'll show you all the ideas and design features that we incorporated into the renovation and hopefully it'll give you some thoughts and ideas to work into your own project. The photos you can see here show the house as it was originally. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we hope you enjoy the video. So the initial vista is relatively similar to the original property when we bought it but the whole feel and the wow factor has completely changed and the biggest transformation that's taken place here is the flooring. You can see that we've installed real oak wood flooring both on the floor and also up the initial set of stairs. Now this flooring just gives, it's changed the feel of this property 100%. When you step into this property now, it looks and feels super modern, clean, it's open. You can see that the wood goes through without any breaks into each of the rooms. So we've got continuous floor, which invites you through. You visually, you're drawn all the way through into the back garden. You can see the outside space. So the wooden floor continuously pulls your eye forward so you can see all the way through. And if we step to the side, we can see it goes all the way through to the kitchen as well, which we'll come to in a minute. So this flooring, firstly, has modernized the whole look because it's stylish, it's clean, it looks like the sort of finish that people want to live in. It's also continuous, so it takes you through into all the rooms, it takes you up the stairs, there is no break, there's no change in the pattern. So it gives that feel of space and openness, even though we've got doors, and it just has a really nice quality feel. So that's the first design feature that really gives you the wow factor, the flooring. Wooden flooring, it, you can't go wrong with wooden flooring. We would recommend this in every single room of the house. So that's our first big change here. The first tip that we would give anybody, wooden flooring, an absolute winner. We'll come on to the stairs a bit later. The other main feature here is the paint. So previously, if you've watched our other videos, you will know that these walls had very thick old wallpaper on them and looked really uninviting and a bit depressing. We've stripped all of that off and it was on the ceilings as well. We've stripped all of that off and we've painted it a nice pale gray color. So this is actually polished pebble is the name. It's a Dulux paint, polished pebble. Basically, it just gives it a modern, crisp, light look. It's brightened the place up. So it's really changed the feel of it. So paint, really cheap way of transforming the property, the interior design. The third change here is the woodwork. So if you'd seen the video of this previously, you'd know that all of this woodwork, so all these skirting boards, all of this banister, and all of the doors were all varnished wood. So they were brown, and it just looked really old fashioned and oppressive and a bit depressive. Depressing. Now, the, all of this woodwork is uh, the original woodwork. We haven't changed the skirting board or the banisters here, but what we've done, we primed it, so we sanded it down, we primed it, and then we painted it with two top coats of white, and it's really changed the look of this property. Before, this was all wooden and horrible and just looked really dark and depressing. Now, it's light, it's bright, it's modern, and it just looks like it's brand new. It looks like we've installed new, for, new, new banisters and new skirting boards, but we haven't. So that's the other big change here. Really easy, really quick, really transform transforms this property from old and dark into light and bright. So paint is a massive game changer when it comes to doing renovation. So let's step into the main living room. You can see that the floor continues through in the same way. And in here, We've got a couple of original features that we've really used to highlight. So the first is the window. Now these windows were here when we bought the property and they looked pretty grim. 
They were old aluminium windows and we had brown skirting board and brown window board and it was really dark and not very attractive. What we've done here, we've obviously painted all of the skirting board and the window board, so this has now been transformed to white and we've got the new wooden flooring and it's brought these windows back to life. So where before they were looking pretty old and tired and horrendous, now they look really stylish and fit in with a 1930s property. So even these handles, these handles are the original handles and they're not hugely attractive, they're the old style. But because we painted everything and it all ties in, you don't even notice them now, they just disappear into the background. So nobody is really looking at these handles and thinking it's spoiling the look. It's actually become a character feature. You know, the handle now is something that is interesting because that's what they were like when they were first fitted. So that's the first character feature. The second is the fireplace. So previously this fireplace was here exactly like this, but it had a brown surround, so it was all varnished. So we've done exactly the same with this surround. We have primed it, sanded it, and then given it three coats, an undercoat and two top coats and made it white and it's just made it look fantastic. It ties it into the room, so we've got the old and the new. So it's the old fireplace, but it's brought to life with a bit of paint. The actual inside of the fireplace itself is exactly the same. We've cleaned it, so you can see there was a hell of a lot of dust and dirt in here, so we've taken all that away, we've cleaned it. We painted the backboard, so this back section was actually a bit tired and looked a bit damaged, so we've given that some fireproof paint. You can see up, up close, you can still see some of the markings, but as you step away from it, you can't notice that. And this is a real fire, so you can put logs or coal or whatever into this basket. This is the original basket from when we bought the house. The granite itself it is the original granite, we haven't changed that at all. But what we have done is we've put the wooden flooring around it. So you can see the way we fitted this, we fitted it very tightly. It's got a very small gap all the way around it, so really hard to see, in fact. You can't really notice it. It ties it in fantastically. It makes it look like we fitted this fireplace after the flooring, like the flooring was here and we fitted this fireplace into it. Obviously we've done it the other way around, but it's really made a feature of this old fireplace. It was looking pretty tired, it wasn't really working, the old carpet and the wallpaper just made it look really awful. We've now brought it back into play, it's now the main feature of this room, it looks great, it's going to be here for another 50 years, it's fantastic. The final feature that we had in this room, so we had some cornicing which we've kept, which is doing its job, it looks good, uh, we've painted it, so it's been brought back to life. Previously there was wallpaper on this ceiling, so the cornice looks nice, it's fine, you know, it, it, it stops the cracking around the top of the room. But the main feature here is the ceiling rose. So this ceiling rose was here previously, as was this light fitting, but they looked really horrendous. They were all dirty, it didn't, hadn't been well maintained, and there was lots of flies and moths and whatnot in this light fitting. So all we've done here is plastered around this rose, painted it, so we've really taken a bit of care to make sure that all of the features come out, that it still looks really intricate and has got the nice feature. So we've cleaned it a little bit and that's really transformed it. It's brought both the rose to life but also the chandelier looks fine as well. So even though it is quite an old-fashioned light fitting, because it's sitting on top or underneath the rows, it works well in this room. So that's been a major benefit because we haven't had to pay for a new light fitting or to change it. And it's giving it, this room a character feel. So the combination of this rose and the original fireplace is really giving some character to this room. So even though we've renovated it and it looks modern, we've got a new radiator, We've obviously tidied up the window and we've got the new flooring and we've got new sockets. So we've obviously modernized the old sockets and put some chrome sockets in here. So they're giving it a slightly modern twist as well. 
But overall, we've still got some character because we've got the fireplace, we've got the rose, and we've got the original windows. So it's a really nice combination of old and new in here. The other feature that we've got, that we'll come on to now, is the new door. Now we've changed all of the doors in this house. The original doors were panelled doors that looked fine. We painted them initially and put new handles on. But as we started to make more progress on the renovation, we decided we wanted the modern feel rather than the old fashioned feel. So predominantly our goal was to modernise, not to make it look like an old Victorian or Georgian house. So we put this door in. This is a, a veneer door, so it's similar to the floor. This has got a real wood surface, so it feels, it's got texture. If you can feel the grain here, but it's only a veneer, so it's only about four millimetres thick as well. But these doors are the heavy duty fire doors. They came unfinished. So what that means is that they had no varnish or oil on them at all. So they had a very rough, dry texture. And we've applied the same oil that we applied to the floor onto these doors. So it means that the colour, the oak colour, ties in with the floor. So it's not identical, but it matches really nicely. We bought new handles, so these were not expensive. We got these from Amazon um, and they're rose. They're, they're nice, nice and modern feel, stylish, good twist, matched up with the new light switch. So we've got polished chrome on the handle, on the switch. We've got it on the hinges. These are heavy doors, so we've got three hinges on this door. So the new door has also transformed this room. It gives you that modern feel. So if we step back into the hallway where we've got two different doors. You can see here, we've got them open, but we've got a door into the living room and then a door into the kitchen diner. It's the same door. It's got the same feel as the floor, as the stairs. This new oak quality feel really brings the house up market. So really good idea to spend a little bit on the doors. These were not super expensive. You can go online, find a good deal, get all the doors, buy them in bulk, get them all together, and then get somebody to fit them all on one day. That will save some money as well. You can see with the door frames here, we have kept the original door frames and all we've done is painted them white. Now, that works well. So you can see that the white door frame with the oak door and the oak floors and the white skirting boards all ties in really nicely. So you don't need to paint these, varnish these or have oak frames. White is fine, it looks good, it's all about the door. The door is the main feature. Let's go through into the dining room and we can see here. The first thing, the first impression is obviously that the floor is continuous, it pulls your eye through. And then as we come through, we've tried to highlight natural light here. So we wanted as much natural light as possible. So we've got double doors and we've got a glass panel above that. And then in the kitchen, we've got a large window to the rear of the kitchen, but we've also got another window. So it's a dual aspect on the side and that's pulling a lot of light into this room as is a small window here on the left-hand side. So we've got a lot of natural light. So as we step into this room, it feels bright, it's light. This is a south facing garden. So the light comes into this room all day. It's got a lovely feel as we step in. The same wooden floor, we've done the same here. We've just painted the skirting boards. We've replaced the radiator. So as you look around the room, it's the same paint. So we've followed through the paint that's in the hallway, the polished pebble gray, the very light gray, is all the way through this house. We put it in every single room. So every room has got the same flooring and the same colored walls, and that makes it feel bigger and brighter and lighter. So here I am standing in the kitchen, looking back at the room, and one of the changes that we made here, so one of the structural changes was we took a wall out. So previously, this space we're looking at was two separate rooms. Where the door into this room is, was actually a small room they were calling a breakfast room. So it went, where that wall is next to the door carried on right through. So we had a small breakfast room that led into the kitchen here. And then there was actually another door. So where this wall is here that we've put in, this small stub wall, 
that was a doorway into this separate space that was a dining room. So we had two separate rooms that were separated by this wall. This wall here went all the way across, went all the way across to that middle wall and we had two separate spaces, which just didn't work. So we took the wall out, it created one large space. So this is now what we're calling the kitchen, dining, living room. So kitchen is, is a small extension that was already built when we bought the house. This part here, we think would be perfect for a dining table. So you'd have a dining table close to the kitchen. And then as I step back, we have this large space, which would be the living room. So you'd probably have a sofa across this wall here, and you'd be able to look out through these double doors into the garden. So taking the wall out has really transformed this space and modernized it. So it wasn't too difficult. It was not a structural wall, so we didn't need to put a steel beam into the ceiling. We just took out the wall, made good the ceiling, plastered and painted, and that was it. But it's changed the way this house operates. It's really improved the flow. So now when you come in, you've got one large space that you could imagine doing some cooking, the family will play, you have sofas, maybe some a play area here, a dining table where you could sit, do some work and uh, just everything that you want to do. And in the summer, obviously open these doors and you could be in and out of the garden as well as in this space. So this is the sort of space that everybody's looking for. That's why we changed the design. We wanted to design this to meet modern demands. And because we're modernizing and making this a really up-to-date space, we changed the lighting. So in here, we've put down lights in this whole ceiling. So previously, there was another ceiling rose here that was similar to the one in the living room. But we felt because we completely changed this to a modern space, the ceiling rose wouldn't really work. And we didn't want a chandelier. We wanted modern lighting. So we installed down lights instead, removed the ceiling rose and created one big modern space. Uh, these days, everybody's looking for a laundry room, for an area where you can put your washing machine and a dryer if possible, and get that out of sight. Behave, you don't really want it. In a house of this size, you don't really want your washing machine in a kitchen because this space is valuable. We need as much of this space for storage and appliances. And if we had a washing machine here, it's gonna kill some of that space but also you're gonna have a lot of dirty washing in your kitchen on a daily basis. You know, you'd be bringing washing to or having wet washing coming out of the washing machine. And if you're cooking and trying to do things as a family, it's not ideal to have your washing going in and out of the kitchen twice a day. So we thought it made a perfect space to, put, to build a utility laundry room. So we step back, we can see here, we put some doors on afterwards, but we've essentially, but we had enough space for two appliances, so we've got a washing machine and a dryer. We could have got a combination washing machine dryer if the space was smaller, but we've got the space so we used it. So absolutely perfect. And because we had some head height, we put a worktop in and we've put in exactly the same worktop as we have in the kitchen. So a bit more expensive, we could have put something cheaper. We could have just put some, a piece of wood, some laminate, something low end, but we wanted the quality feel. So we've got the wooden floor, we've got everything feeling quite upmarket. We wanted the quality feel to carry on all the way into this utility laundry space. So we put the worktop in and we've done the same as the kitchen. We've got the splash back here all the way around the side. So that means if you've got something wet on there, it's not gonna damage the plaster on the walls. You've got a waterproof surface all the way around. So that's fantastic. We've put the plumbing in, and then we thought this was a perfect space to put the new boiler. So the boiler, quite often in renovation properties, you put the boiler into your kitchen. That would have taken up some of our really valuable cupboard space. We only have a limited amount of wall space here. And it would have been a real shame if we've had to take one of those cupboards for the boiler. So rather than doing that, we put the boiler in this utility space. So we've got the washing machine, the dryer, the boiler, we've managed, because it's newly installed, we've got some nice pipe work, it's all nicely done, all modern, all easy to follow. This is an external wall, so we were able to put the flue straight out into the airspace. 
We've got separate videos on this. If you have a look at our channel, you can see we talk about the renovation, the installation of the boiler and the utility room. And the other benefits we put in here, we made sure there was a plug socket at an, an easy to use height, so you can use appliances in here. So you could, you could have more um, appliances like maybe an iron or you could put, you know, store some stuff in here, or you could even have it for making coffee or whatever you want. And we put some, a cupboard in here as well, because we've got the space, and that'll be ideal for storing all your cleaning equipment and, and whatnot. So we've really taken a space that was awkward and dead and not really doing anything in this property. It was just dead space. And we've made it into a really valuable part of the house. This is ideal. You can have all your, all your dirty washing in here, take it straight from the washing machine straight to the dryer. You can put it onto the work surface. You can store things. And at the end of the day, if there is any mess and any fuss and you don't like the look of it, you can just close those doors and nobody knows what's going on behind those doors. So this is absolutely perfect. If you're here, family's playing, somebody's doing some cooking in the kitchen, you can be doing the washing. And if you don't want to carry on with it, close the doors, job done. So really good design idea. and. We would highly recommend trying to incorporate a utility laundry space into any property that you're renovating. It's really helpful when you live there and if you're selling it, it really does make a difference. It will make your property stand out from the rest because a utility space is what everybody wants these days. And finally, coming on to the kitchen, you can check out our channel. We've done some other videos on this kitchen but we just talked through the changes that we made here. When we first bought this, this kitchen was very dated, it was dark, it was a bit depressing, and it needed to be completely replaced. The main change that we made structurally, there was a back door to the property on this wall here. So round about here, there was a back door. And the problem with that back door was that it was restricting the amount of space you could use for the kitchen. So it was breaking the work surface and meant that you had less cupboards and the ability to put less appliances in. So once we've opened up this space by removing the wall that was previously here, it meant that the double doors are easily accessible for this area. You don't need a back door in the kitchen because that's the point of entry to the garden. So we blocked it up plastered over and painted it in. The window alongside the door here, we could have blocked that up too. We could have changed that by filling it in and making this whole wall available for wall cupboards. However, we felt because the kitchen's quite small, if it had cupboards on both sides, it would feel a little bit too oppressive. So if we had a cupboard here that was basically blocking off this whole space, it would mean we'd only have this middle section to walk up and down and it would feel and we'd only have a very small work surface at the bottom to be able to prepare food and put things like toasters and kettles. So we thought it would work better to keep this wall free of cupboards and also keeping the window gives us more light and makes the room have a double aspect look. So you can look out both the back up the garden, to the garden and to the side where maybe there's a barbecue and whatever else is going on here. So it really gives it a lot of light, but also makes it feel bigger because as you walk in, you don't feel that like you're being crowded by wall cupboards. You've got a lot of space to use. The other benefit of that meant that we could put an extractor fan. So we spent a little bit more on this extractor fan. It's quite modern, it's quite clean. It's a glass one rather than um, aluminium that you see in a lot of other ones. And we've gone with a very modern induction hob. So this is basically glass. And the benefit of that is that it's clean, it's easy to keep, to maintain, but it makes the wall look stylish. When you look now, it's modern, it's clean. It looks like a sort of up-to-date kitchen. So we liked the ability of doing that. We liked the windows. And then we have maximized everything in this kitchen. So we've tried to use every square inch. So we've got here on the left-hand side, we've got a fridge freezer. So obviously everybody wants a fridge and a freezer these days. So we managed to fit that in. We, we already had this arch. So when we bought the property, this archway that we can see here, into the kitchen was already here. And that really, we worked with that. We didn't want to make a structural change. 
you know, this is holding up the rest of the house, so we didn't want to start demolishing that. But it was actually a perfect size because it's the same, the depth of this arch here is the same as a kitchen cabinet. So it meant that we could just fit everything from floor to ceiling on this side. So we've got the fridge, freezer, we've got a double oven in. So again, a little bit more expensive than a single oven, but it gives you the ability to cook two different things simultaneously. And we've got extra tall cupboards. So we made sure that we could use as much space as possible. So you can see this section at the top here, this box at the top is actually the extra tall box. So if I open the fridge, you can see the fridge finishes at a certain height. And then we've got these two cupboards at the top. Now they're a little bit extra to pay for, but it just gives you the ability to store more things. And more storage is absolutely what everybody wants. So we definitely recommend getting extra tall cupboards. And that meant that then when we fitted the wall cabinets, we could fit them at a higher level. So that all continued across. So these are tall wall cabinets. So they've got the same, they've got a lot of storage in them. Um, that space at the top was dead anyway. And it just gives the ability then to have a bit more space between the work surface and the bottom of the cabinets, because it's not, we feel that it's not a nice feature if these are too low, it feels too enclosed. So we've basically pushed them up as high as we could. In terms of the, the rest of the cabinets, we've got the wall cabinets here. These corner units, when we've got two corners in a kitchen like this, it's absolutely essential to make sure you use these corners to the best you can. So what we've got here on this side, we've got a kidney shaped pullout. So there's two of those, one at the top, one at the bottom. And the benefit of that is it means you can put cans on the back section here and they're easy to access because you can push it all the way in it. If this was a fixed cabinet, it'd be quite hard to get to the back of this because it's, it's quite a big reach. Whereas with these pullouts, it's ideal because they're strong. That will take a lot of weight and it just means it's easy to, to pull things in and out. So again, a little bit more expensive, but certainly worth it. Makes that corner cabinet really usable. And then we've also got a tiny cupboard next to it. So we're using both sides of that corner. And then this corner, we've gone for a slightly different option. So these, this is two doors, so you open the first one first and then the second. And then we've got a revolving carousel. So similar idea that you can use all the space without having to reach into the back of the cupboard, but it's a slightly different concept. So looks nice, quite stylish, and we think works really well. Enables you to use all of this space into the core and close it all up and it looks nice and stylish as well. So corner cabinets, really good idea. Lots of different options on that, but certainly worth sitting down and working out what you want to do. We've got a dishwasher here. So again, modern, what people want. This really makes sure you can tidy away all of the dishes and glasses really easily. And because it's a fitted kitchen, you don't know it's there, it's invisible. So really nice feature. And similarly, under the cooker, we've managed to put these large pan drawers in. So these pan drawers, ideal because you can store all of your pans. They're really strong, heavy duty, and again, means that you can put everything away without people really seeing all of your bits and bobs. In terms of lighting, it's quite bright today, but we'll put the lights on. And you can see what we've done here. We've got LED lighting underneath the cabinet so we done here you can see the LED you can't really see the benefits of it because it's so bright today in this kitchen but we've got the lighting in here that, that looks really stylish at night but the added feature that we put in which we would recommend is we put the same effect on the top of the cabinets so it's hard to see it because it's so bright in here at the moment but we've basically got LED lighting on the top of the cabinet and on the bottom of the cabinet and the benefit of that is it just looks so much more stylish. When you come in now, you can see that the top, there's a glow above the cabinets. It makes it look quite space age. It's not common. You don't see it in a lot of kitchens. And that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to do stuff that not everybody else is doing so that when people come in, they go, wow, that's a great idea. I wish I had done that in my kitchen. So little tip, it, it doesn't cost a lot more, but it's definitely worth it. Think about your lighting, think about the sort of wow factor that you can add. We're starting in the hallway to the house because the initial impact 
and the first impression you have of the first floor is the staircase. Now, we've touched on this before, but we have clad this entire staircase in real oak. So this has cost a bit more, and we've taken a bit more time to do it, but the initial impression and the wow factor is really worth that extra effort. If this was carpeted, it just wouldn't have the same feel. We put the lovely oak flooring on the ground floor. We discussed that in the first video, but here we've taken the time to actually use the same boards to create an amazing staircase. If you look at the pictures that we had originally when this was carpeted, it just didn't have the same impression. Whereas now it's quite a grand entrance to this first floor. So let's go up and have a look at what we've done. We've talked about the balustrading previously. This is the original banister. So the original banister here was all varnished. So it was brown, really not very nice, a bit dark and depressing. And we've transformed this by basically sanding it down, putting some primer onto it, and then painting it white. We took two layers of eggshell white paint on this and it's really come out lovely. And you can see now that as you walk up the stairs, the combination of the new flooring and the white balustrades is really quite a nice impact. This window is already here. Uh, all we've done here is basically done the same with the window board. We've sanded it down and painted it white and it's changed the feel of this window. It's still the original aluminium window, but because we've now painted in all the surround in white rather than brown, it really makes it look quite modern and fits in nicely with our theme. So as we come up onto this floor, we've installed all of the new doors that we talked about in the first video. So these are real oak fire doors. They came unfinished, so same as the flooring, we've applied an oil to them. I've just closed this over, I'll give you the impact as we come up. You can see that we painted door frames white and we've got these oiled doors. It really gives it quite a lovely modern feel. We've got a rose handle on here, modern, wasn't very expensive, but just gives you a good feel when you look at that door. So the landing itself has been transformed through all the new doors that have been fitted on here. And we've got the same flooring that's been brought up from downstairs. So in each of these rooms, it's got the same wooden flooring. So that's quite unusual. In most houses these days, you'll find people will put carpet. But if you look at the impact that this makes, when you come up onto the top of this landing, you've got wooden flooring, which is continuous. We deliberately put no breaks. There are no breaks across each of the door frames. Quite often you'll have a break here. Somebody will put a threshold bar and it just spoils the look and gives you a trip hazard and just is unnecessary. So make the floor continuous. It makes it feel bigger. It invites you into the rooms, but the wooden flooring is a real winner here. When you walk into all of these rooms, they all look bigger and more modern and more impressive because they've got this continuous high-end wooden flooring. So it is more expensive than carpet. It does take a bit more time to fit it, but once it's down, this will last for a lifetime and is really worth the extra effort and the extra cost. So in this room, and in the, all of these rooms, the original skirting boards are still in place. So we have primed and painted these skirting boards. And we had a problem when we did that because the guys who fitted the floor used multi-tools and cut all the way along these skirting boards and did quite a shabby job. So I'll we'll show you on the video here, you can see that across the bottom of all these skirting boards, there was a real uneven finish to it and it, it really spoiled the look. When you came into the room, because the flooring looks so good, when, you, when your eye saw the line had been cut, it really made it look like a, an amateur job. So to counter that, we installed some white beading. So you can see here, across the bottom of the skirting board, there is a white beading. So you can see it uh, in more detail, but we've installed that and that has really brought the finish back up to the required level. So now when you come in here, you don't think about the skirt, the bottom of the skirting board, you're looking at the floor and it all ties in really nicely. 
For the features in this room, we've installed a, a radiator. This is in exactly the same place as the previous radiator, but this is a more modern version. So it's a double radiator, much more efficient, and it's obviously new. But we've used the same pipes that were here originally, which is why they're white, as opposed to any uh, other color. The window that was in this room originally was uh, rotten, so we had to replace the whole thing. So this is a brand new installed window. The window board is the same, we've just primed and painted it. And uh, the new window wasn't super expensive, but ties in really nicely, gives you a nice view of the garden, makes this all very attractive. The other main feature in this room, when we first acquired it, these cupboards were already here, but they didn't look like this. They had old fashioned, wooden louvre doors so they had slats rather than a full opaque finish and it looked very old-fashioned and initially we thought we could just strip it out and uh, and remove it but actually when we looked into it we found that structurally it was quite sound and was actually worth keeping and so what we did we removed all of the original doors and then replaced them with mdf so all of these units here all these doors have been made from MDF. We just got ready-made MDF, so you can see it's um, about 20 mil thick, and we've cut it to size, painted it, stuck some new handles on, which has really brought a more modern look to it, a more modern feel. It just looks now like we've just made this thing. But actually, when you look inside, uh, all of this was here originally, we've just painted it. So this structure was already here, you can see the old skirting boards. These are not skirting boards that we've done anything with. We've just painted it. This bar was already here. So we've literally just painted it around it. But you can see in all the cupboards, it's really, really valuable storage space. And it's actually quite a nice design. We put a mirror in here. There was no mirror previously. So we installed a mirror with a light. So we've got a light in there now. So it becomes more of a dressing area. You can sit here. Uh, get ready, do anything that you want to do that involves a mirror. So that's just a small touch. But yeah, basically we have just taken what was here and renovated it and made it really modern. And so you can see this, this is the original bar. We didn't buy a gold one. Uh, it was already here. Uh, it's, it's fine. It's quite solid. It's quite a substantial bar. So we thought we'd keep that. Um, and just built around it. So when you're doing a renovation, that's really what you need to start thinking is, is there anything that I can keep, that I can work with, but I need to be able to modernize it. So don't keep things that are gonna spoil the look and impact on your final finish. Only use stuff that you think is gonna add some value. But you can see here that we have changed this dramatically from what it was previously into a lovely new modern feel and everybody likes some built-in wardrobes so definitely worth keeping final touches in here we put a new light fitting in so we've got a modern led version so it's flashing on the video because uh, it doesn't come up very well so i'll turn it off but it's it's a nice modern clean design fun uh, looks quite cool and we also replaced all of the existing sockets. So you can see the sockets are quite low down. Uh, because they're existing, we didn't have to raise them up to meet current building regs. We've replaced these with chrome sockets with white inserts. So not super expensive, but just look a little bit more upmarket than your standard white. And the same with the light switch. So that's the second bedroom. Let's go into the master bedroom. Pretty similar in here. We changed all of the sockets. So you can see that they're all chrome. We've got a similar sort of light fitting. In here we had more of a feature window, but it was looking very tired when we bought the property because it had brown surround. It was all varnish and really unattractive. So all we've done in here is to prime all of this woodwork, same with the skirting boards. We primed all of this, we painted it white, and it makes these windows now look like an exciting, attractive feature, whereas before they looked old fashioned and tired. So a little bit of paint and a little bit of uh, elbow grease has really brought this window back to life. Previously here we had a big curved radiator, a single skin, old fashioned, really inefficient. We've replaced it because the modern versions are so much more efficient. We didn't need one as big and it's very expensive to buy a curved radiator. So we bought one uh, that fitted the room, gives enough power for the room, 
but didn't need to be uh, bent into shape. So you can see it just takes up a very small amount of the space now. So that's the master bedroom. Let's just jump into the small bedroom. Not a lot to say here, same flooring, same fittings that we've got in all the other rooms. Nice chrome finish. We've got a slightly less elaborate lamp in here because it's a small bedroom, so we didn't really feel it needed it. And we've replaced the old radiator with the new one. And then we've done the same thing here. We've basically painted all of the old woodwork white. So that's the three bedrooms on the middle floor. Now let's go and have a look at the bathroom. As we come in, you can see we've got the same door on the bathroom. So in here, we have got polished porcelain tiling. A polished porcelain gives you a fantastic mirror-like finish. It's not slippery, so when, when you stand on it, it, is, it doesn't slip. So it's non-slip, but it's fantastically hard wearing and gives you a really nice modern finish. If I put the lights on, you can see that uh, it, the, it reflects all of the lighting that we've got in the ceiling. Um, it's a bright day today, so you can't see it super well, but you can see that. But it's a really nice material to work with. So polished porcelain, definitely recommend using that. We've gone for a half tiled finish. So you can see here that the, we've, we've, used the, we've used oblong blocks. So these are 300 by 600. And we've essentially made this about a meter or so high. So the reason we've done that is it gives you the top bit of the wall here. You're able to paint it. And that means that you can change the color scheme and, and keep modernizing this room. If this room is fully tiled in gray, these, these tiles are light gray, you can't see the color particularly well because it's quite a bright day today, but it's a very light gray, nice and neutral, looks very modern. But who knows what's gonna happen in five or 10 years time. Gray might not be as popular. It might be that people like pastel colors or bright colors or pinks or yellows. And it, with this half tiling, you can paint the rest of this room whatever colour you like. So we've painted it polished pebble to fit in with the rest of the room and the rest of the house, sorry. Um, but we could change that in the future. If it's fully tiled, you don't have that option. So that's a nice tip. And also, if you're paying for it, it's cheaper to only half tile. So if you only have to pay for half the amount of tiles and you only have to pay for the tiling guys for one or two days, it's cheaper than fully tiling the whole room. So uh, it's good on the budget, it's good on the pocket, and it also works well going forward because you can change the look and the feel of the room. Let's pick up some of the features in here. We've got a feature radiator. That wasn't particularly expensive, but it looks great. It gives you really nice look when you're sitting. I'm, I've got my back here. It gives that great finish. It just looks upmarket, it's usable. You can put your towels on it. Definitely recommend that. And we fitted this into the wall. So rather than having pipes coming up from the floor, we designed this room in advance, made sure that the pipes were coming out of the wall. We've got some nice plastic covers on here that are chrome that fit in. We use some chrome pipe. So all in all, it's a nice professional job. Looks good, really quite a nice feature. Stepping back, looking at the rest of the room, we designed this for maximum impact given the space we've got. It's a quite, it's, it's a decent sized room, but it's not huge. So we fitted in the bath underneath the window. The window is already here. We had to replace this window because it was rotten. Um, we've replaced it with a nice UPVC. We've tiled into the window so you can see we created a window ledge from the same tiles. We put a nice edge on this. So this is uh, a nice aluminium trim. It just, it's harder wearing than tiles, so it can't chip. If this was just a tile edge, it could chip if you hit it with a bottle accidentally with a shampoo bottle or something. So we put some trim on, that gives it a nice finish. We put that all the way around the top of the tiling. We created a nice window edge, it's useful, but also because that window is here, we had to put the bath in that place because we couldn't put anything higher than the windowsill and we needed somewhere to put the bath, it's the perfect place. So that was the starting point for the design of this room. Check out some of our other videos. We do have some longer videos that look into how to go about planning and designing a bathroom, but that was the starting point. We had the bath, we then knew there was a space here that was perfect for the toilet. So the bath and the toilet were the first two items that we designed. Then on this wall, we wanted a full-size walk-in shower. That's what everybody wants these days, standalone shower. So we put that here. 
we put it we put it this direction so it's lengthways it comes this way because we had more space to fit it and that left us a nice gap to put a nice vanity unit and we chose this unit because it's modern stylish and it gives you some built-in storage so we've got some drawers in here that it's essential when you're designing a room like this to keep it looking modern clean and stylish you don't really want to have everything on display so it's nice to be able to store your cleaning equipment and any other things in that area and then this window still can be left for more decorative products so you might have some uh, flowers on there and some shampoos and, and various things that you don't mind having on display coming on to the fittings themselves we've gone for chrome tying in with the rest of the house so this is a wall mounted shower and bath filler we wanted one that had a separate shower because these days uh, people like to have a bath for the kids and if you're washing the kids hair in the bath it's nice to be able to have a different shower to rinse that so all in all not very expensive but looks great gives it that modern feel looks stylish it's nice that it's mounted on the wall again we planned ahead for that made sure the plumbing was in place before we did the tiling but pretty straightforward to do Coming on to the sink, this is a resin sink, so it's plastic, but nice modern feel, got a click clack waist here, so, and, and a modern mono, pro, mono uh, tap, so it's uh, just one tap for the hot and the cold. Onto the shower, we've used the shower tray, so it's popular these days to have shower wet rooms, we don't really like them because they tend to have issues, or we get mold starting to build up on the floor, it's, the, having a shower tray is very simple, straightforward, and not very expensive. We've elevated this because the plumbing underneath uh, sits down a little. So it's best, we've designed it in this way. It looks fine and makes it easy to access those pipes in the future if there's a problem with the plumbing down there. This was a unit that we bought. It's frameless, so it, does, it minimizes the amount of silver, so it's mostly glass. It's got a nice roller slide on the top, uh, quite modern, uh, not super expensive, but does the job and looks great. And then inside the shower, we've got a modern thermostatic shower valve uh, with two wheels, one for the temperature and one for the power. The other things to touch on, I guess, in this room is the mosaic. So we've installed this mosaic. These are, you can purchase these from Amazon or eBay in sheets. They come, there's usually about 30 on a sheet. And then we've cut this to size, so we've just cut two off. And then we just run that all the way around. This has got some backing behind it. These, these mosaics are much thinner than the actual tiles themselves. So we, we put some backing on it to make sure that it's flush, that it sits nicely, uh, it's all flat. And then we put that all the way around. We put it through the middle of the shower. Obviously, you need to fully shower, to fully tile the shower area because it's, uh, it's wet. But we put it through the middle of that and then underneath the mirror and then all the way through we put it into the window and then round on this side and the reason we put this in is really just to break up the gray it gives it a bit more style gives it a bit more pizzazz a bit more wow factor so it catches your eye it's a little bit upmarket um, and we feel that it's, it's been worth the extra effort to put this in because it just differentiates it if this was all just plain gray tiling it would look pretty dull Having this through the middle really lifts it and makes it um, a much more upmarket finish. So the final feature in here, but one of the most important to talk about is the mirror. So we have fitted a large mirror. We haven't put it all the way to the ceiling because we quite like not having a full size mirror because it looks a little bit more stylish if it's slightly letterbox style as they call it. But this is about a meter high, so it's quite high, quite a substantial mirror. What this does, when you walk into this room, it gives you the visual impression that the room is twice the size. So when I look at here, there's a toilet and a bath, but as you walk over, obviously in the mirror, you can see the toilet and the bath reflected. So visually, it makes this room double in size. So this room is about two and a half meters, three meters across, but when you look in the mirror, it feels more like five or six meters. So it doesn't feel oppressive. And combined with the window, which is bringing in a ton of light, it makes it super light because that light is bouncing off the mirror and back into the room. So it's doubling up the impact of the natural light. 
So the Mirror is a really, really big winner. We would recommend that. It's not, they're not expensive. We bought this, we just got one made to measure and then this has just been stuck up with Mirror adhesive. Quite a simple job to do. Uh, we put a bit of a frame around it, as you can see. We used the same trim that we put on, so this, this metal piece here. It's the same trim that we put around the tiles and it just gives it a slightly nicer finish. So it's the same as we've got on this window ledge. They're not very expensive, they come in quite long lengths, but it just gives it a nice finish, ties it in, just means you don't have glass on the edges so it can't be chipped or damaged. So really nice little feature, but definitely recommend a large mirror. The final thing to talk about here is the lighting. We've installed modern LED lighting, pretty standard these days, but it uh, really changes the look of this room, makes it nice and bright and light when you need that lighting. Today, we're gonna to look at the loft that has now been completed and focus in on some of the design features that have made it such a success. So here we are looking at the staircase, the new staircase that's been built. Now there's a few features here worth looking at. We've spent a lot of time making this area really fit in nicely. So this has all been created. This window was already here. So we've managed to keep the window so you can see that we've put the plaster around the corner of the window. We've managed to keep it, so that's nice. And then we've done a nice sweep on the plaster and that's been achieved by using mesh and building up that plaster. So if you're working on your own design, put a bit of extra effort in. You can see it sort of curves up. It's a really nice finish. It really gives aesthetic value. Ask your builder to do that rather than just putting square plasterboard. It's less likely to crack and just looks better in the long term. Moving on to the stairs, you may have seen some of our other videos, but the existing floors here, we'd already put oak floor everywhere in this house. So to tie in with that, we have clad the new staircase in oak. Um, you can look at that in more detail on our other videos, but it really gives it that high quality finish that just gives you a really smart, clean, modern look as you come up these stairs. So that's been an absolute winner. And then the other feature that we would definitely recommend on every single loft conversion is to put some natural light into the stairwell. So you can see here, we've fitted a window onto the new gable wall. So this is a hip to gable, so we've got a, a, a square vertical wall here. Um, that's bringing in huge amounts of natural light. We've got the lights on at the moment just for this video, but you'd be able to come up here perfectly fine right up until dark uh, just from the illumination from that window. And that makes a big difference because it makes this area feel part of the natural flow of the house. If you didn't have it, this would be dark. You'd have to have the lights on even during the day, even during the summer. Um, definitely recommend it. So if you don't have a, a gable wall such as this one, a vertical wall, then you can get Velux windows that will go into the ceiling above where you are, or you can have a dome. But definitely look into that, get your builder to let some natural light into this, to the area because it will make a huge difference to the look of your loft conversion. So coming up the stairs, as we come to the door to the room, under the building regulations in the UK, when you add a loft conversion, you have to make sure all of the doors in your house are fire doors. That's not standard. So we've had to change every door in this house I'm giving you a sweep here of this door. We made the extra effort to put in oak finished doors. So these doors weren't very expensive. We got them from an online retailer. Um, they came unfinished. So we've applied the same oil to these doors that we applied to the floors. So they are similar looking in color. This is Osmo oil. Um, that's just a satin clear oil. But you can see that the quality of the door really then invites you and it's showing you that this is a high quality finish. To add to that, we've added some fittings that, again, not massively expensive. They're not going to set you back in terms of your budget for the loft. This is a very small piece of expenditure. But if you get something that's a little bit more expensive than standard, so this is a polished chrome finish, polished finish handle, rather than just a standard handle and a standard switch. It just gives you that extra feeling of quality. So let's go and have a look inside the room. 
Now one of the features here is that we've carried the wooden flooring through. So this is the same wooden flooring that we can see downstairs when we look into the rooms that are already here. It's the same flooring. So we brought it through. One feature is that there's no break. So you don't want a threshold break here. Builders and workmen quite often want to put a break in when there's a door. They just feel the need to put some sort of door threshold. Don't let them do that because it spoils the look. So here we've got the, the landing area and it carries on straight through. And it's just this extra meter or so here gives the room an extra feeling of depth. It makes it feel bigger as you open this door. And it just invites you in and gives you that high quality feel that you're after. So let's step into the room and have a look at some of the features in here. So the first feature, similar to what we had on the landing, is the natural light. So the pitched roof, which is on the front of the house here, we've got two Velux windows. Again, this is something you can put one in. Um, it's slightly cheaper, but it makes a huge difference. It brings a lot of natural light into this room and just gives you the feeling of space and um, because a Velux window is set back naturally, you've got this depth in the window, it makes it feel a little bit bigger in here. So even though this is pitch roof, you can walk all the way through to the window and you can you get a feeling that it's slightly higher because there's a cutout in the ceiling. So that adds to the feeling of space and light. And having two of them just brings in a lot more light. And then what we have done, we've matched up a couple of storage doors underneath the Veluxes just to give it that sense of symmetry. So it just looks like it's been designed perfectly, which it has. So that's a nice feature. And then on the Velux, make sure if you're painting your ceilings white, that you get this white finish. Because these come in uh, a brown pine finish and quite often people put them in and it just looks odd so do, don't do that get the white ones going back to a bit more design so as I mentioned before under the building regs you have to have a landing area here before the door you have to have 850 mil minimum we've got about a meter here um, from the edge this this edge of the top step through to the doorway and that's that's a safety feature to make sure people don't fall down the stairs or um, you know there's there's no accidents because we had to bring, therefore we had to bring this wall forward 850, we could have just cut that back and had a very odd shape in here, but we decided that the 850 gave us the natural built feeling to put a wardrobe in here. So the, we had to bring this wall forward anyway because of this landing, and then it just happens that that is the perfect depth for a wardrobe. So. We squared the wall off across where the door came in and that's created a really nice built-in wardrobe. And as you can see, we've got enough height all the way across to put a nice square frame in and we thought that adding a mirror gives you that concept of additional space. You know, the beauty of mirrors, the magic of mirrors is that it makes everything look twice as big. So if we go all the way back here, we can see when you look down, that because of the reflection in the mirror, it makes it look much bigger, even though it's actually, if I turn it towards the door of the ensuite, that's how big it is really. When you're looking at the mirror, the concept makes it feel bigger. And if you've got your bed opposite that, it will make the room feel bigger. It reflects light and just makes it a more pleasant living space. So that's one benefit. The other main benefit of having the built-in wardrobe is obviously the storage space. So there's a couple of tips here. Hanging rail, you want to put that at 1.2 meters. Most clothes hang down somewhere between 800 and a meter, and that gives you an extra couple of hundred mils at the bottom where you can store some shoes, shoe boxes, anything you want at the bottom. So 1.2 meters gives you hanging space plus some storage space at the bottom. Another tip here, make sure your floor continues through all the way into the wardrobe. You can see here, it looks so much better if the, wall, if the floor continues. There's nothing more annoying, you open the wardrobe and there's a drop down to the, the original floorboards or the chipboard. Get the wood to go through, it looks much better. And carry the skirting board through as well. So you can see here, skirting boards on either side, 
and we've fitted it inside as well and it just gives it that high quality finish. For the shelving, usually we, we've gone for 300 mils here of depth which is about right if you're stacking uh, clothing or anything else in here. So we've fitted two shelves, standard, and they've been fitted on battens. So if you look in here, you can see that there's a, a wooden batten. That's about a two inch batten that's been screwed to the wall. We painted it white and then that's sitting on that. And then at the top, we had a bit of space that has been it's slightly constricted. You can see that the ceiling um, is slightly sloping in here. So we fitted an extra shelf in there a top shelf which uh, is slightly set back so you can see I put my hand up you can put things in here in boxes uh, extra bit of storage it's a bit awkward to get to but we've tried to maximize the usable space but it's it's again additional storage which is what everybody needs everybody needs as much storage as possible so that was a design feature now we did consider running that wardrobe all the way across to the the wall where these two doors are situated. So we could have had a slightly angled wardrobe with some shelving to the left. But actually, what we thought, because the stairs, when we go back out to the stairs, the stairs do not go all the way to the front of the house, as you can see. They only go to the edge of the wardrobe. So we had this extra space. Initially, the builder wanted to close this off and have a landing at the top here, so we would have the staircase and then a seating area, which is a complete waste of time. So what we thought actually was better, because it's about two meters deep, we thought that this could be used as either a home office or a dressing room or something of that nature, which will basically give us some extra usable space in this room. So as you can see here, we've carried on the skirting board and the flooring, and this space is it's about 1.2 meters wide by about two meters deep. Now this is, it's got restricted head heights as you can see, but you can walk down, the, 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 this main section here is uh, about two meters tall. So you can walk down it, most people could walk down that quite comfortably, but you can certainly put a desk in that area or a dressing table or something that you, you'd want to use. So if you wanted to work from home, you could set up a PC here and a desk and use that very nicely as your home office. We made sure that the sockets matched that concept. So we not only have we got sockets here, but we've also put a socket right in the corner so you'd be able to have some power. And we've also put a separate switch to this area so you can switch the light on and off to this particular space. So it's all about thinking through the space you're working with and getting your design right before you start the build. So here, the door gave us the idea of, we had to bring that wall forward, 850. That created the space for the wardrobe and that then left us this space to use as a home office work environment. So the door really was the driver, but then we had to design what we were gonna use everything else for. So think it through, think what you want. If you want a home office, if you can get it, then even if it's a small space like this, it will be invaluable in future. It's worth thinking through the options. Never let your builder say, oh, we're just gonna close that off because that's the easy thing to do. Don't let them do that. Here's a good example over here. So on this wall, we've got a chimney breast. So the chimney comes through from down below. And so the, the, the right-hand part of this wall is set back. The builder initially said to us, well, we may as well just square that off and just carry that all the way through. So what would have happened then is here, where we've got this setback, we would have had the wall continuing at that level all the way across, and we'd have lost this small section of space here. Now, that may not seem like a lot of space to be bothered with, but actually, when you live here, if you look at this space now, if you take a step back, that is a perfect area to fit a wardrobe so we've got, between the back wall and this window, is about 800 mils deep, which is the size of a wardrobe. So now, if you want to, you could fit a really big wardrobe in here, so two meters wide by 800 deep in that space. If we'd have allowed the builder to carry this wall on at the same level all the way through, we wouldn't be able to do that. We would only have about four or 500 of additional space. So. Think through in the future. And the same with the window. So 
here on the back wall, we could have installed a much larger window, would have let more light through. However, what we have now to the left of the window as we look at it, is another space that could be used for a wardrobe, some drawers, a desk, whatever you want in here. So we've got a lot of flexibility going forward. We've got potential to put a wardrobe or a desk on that side. We've got potential to put a wardrobe or a desk here. And so you've got to think through the flexibility. Don't make your window too big. Don't let your builder square off any walls because it's easier for him to do that. Make every inch count. Make, just get all the usable space and think about what you're going to do in the future. The other thing on the window worth considering, see a lot of loft conversions where people have Juliet balconies. So rather than having a window here, you would have a balcony that would go from floor to ceiling. So it, we could, if we'd have done that, people seem to be drawn to Juliet balconies. So they think, oh, that'll be quite a nice feature. I'll have floor to ceiling glass. However, if we'd have done that, firstly, where do you put your radiator? Because the radiator can't go underneath the window. So then your radiator has to go somewhere else. So that's a problem. Secondly, you can't put anything in front of those doors because they're glass and they have to be able to open. So it means all the floor space around your window can't be used. And thirdly, how are you ever gonna use a balcony anyway? You're not really going to stand out there. And finally, if you've got children, it's just an added piece of stress. If, they, if you've got doors that potentially open and they could climb out onto your balcony or your balustrade, uh, you don't really want that. So we would always recommend having a window rather than a Juliet balcony. Let's have a quick look at the sockets and the switches in this room. Touched on it before. So first thing here on this, so the main switch of the room, we've got dimmer switch. So we've got 16 spotlights in here on a dimmer and the great thing about that is as you turn them down it can really change the feel of the lighting so at night if you're in here maybe watching tv or just chatting or whatever you might be doing you can turn the lights down and it really makes it a more pleasant space to be in or if you want it bright you can do that so we went for the dimmer it costs slightly more for a dimmer and the the lights fittings are slightly more expensive but it's it's marginal it's really you know it's, it's not a lot of money in the context of your loft conversion, but definitely get a dimmer. We could have split it, we could have had two different rings here. So one could have been on one controller, one on the other. Uh, that's an option. We could have definitely done that, we didn't. Um, again, as we mentioned here, this is a switch. One of these is for this area, whereas the desk area and the other switch is for underneath these cupboards that we will show in a minute. So just thinking through what you might want on, what we might not. As we mentioned before, we've gone for polished chrome fittings throughout. Just gives it that slightly more upmarket feel. Looks a bit better than if you have white plastic. Um, doesn't cost a lot more, does make a big difference. On the sockets, make sure when you're, when you're designing your loft that you put plenty of plug sockets in. So in this room, I would always recommend um, putting at least one in every corner. But if we look in this room, we've got one in this corner for the desk, one here and one on the other side. And the concept here is if you were to put a large bed in this room, you might want to put the bed against those doors. So therefore you have a socket either side of the bed if you've got a double bed in here. Turning onto this wall, same concept. If you wanted to put a bed on that wall, then you could do that. And we've got socket, we've got a socket on either side for, for those for, for that concept turning around here again if you look at this if we're thinking about having a desk either in this side or at that back wall then you want some power for that so we've got one two three four five six seven double sockets in this room that's a lot of double sockets but it is annoying if you've got a new newly built space and you don't have enough sockets to work with make sure you have more sockets than you'll ever need and then you'll never complain about it moving on to the storage space here so the other thing we were very keen on as well as having the work area is to make sure that this section in the restricted head height was maximum we had maximum usage of that so if we look down you can see the slope on the ceiling 
This wall is, is about one meter high, so beyond that it's less than a meter tall. The builder initially wanted to close it off and just have this wall as the final part of the room. That's such a waste of space, so we were never going to allow that. And then secondly, they wanted to stop the flooring. So that, the problem with that, if you don't carry your flooring through, and I don't just mean the wooden flooring, but also the subfloor, so the chipboard floor and the insulation, if you don't carry it through, when you open these doors, there would be a big drop down and it makes it really awkward to store anything if, you, if everything's dropping down 12 inches. Um, it also makes it much colder if you don't put insulation underneath it. So we wanted to make sure that this looked like and felt like part of the existing room. So if we just go in here. Firstly, you can see the flooring carries through. There's no break, which is really important. It feels like it's part of the room when you look at it. It feels like a continuation of the room, makes it feel bigger. Next point is that we made sure there was some skirting board put in here. So we've carried the skirting board all the way around so it feels more like part of the room rather than a cupboard. The next thing, we got them to plaster the, the walls. So you can see here, they've plastered and painted it. So it feels like the ceiling is con continuing. Um, not every builder will do that. You know, they won't, some of them might not even want to put plasterboard on it and want, might want to leave it just the insulation. Don't let them do that. So work as if this is part of the existing room and then you'll have an amazing usable space. And the last thing is to make sure they put some lighting in here. Because what you don't want is you come in in the middle of the night or when it's dark and it's dark and scary and not very friendly. Put some lighting in here. It doesn't cost very much, but it'll make it much more pleasant to use. And then on your cupboards, the cupboard doors, we've, done, we've split our doors into two. And the reason for that is that it makes it much easier to just access quickly. If this was one big door, and if you can imagine in the future, if we've got a bed that's sitting in front of those doors, to open one door, it's a really big swing. Whereas with two doors, you only have to open, to, to, to access it, it's a much smaller swing. If you look at the swing on that, if this was one door, it would be twice the, the length and therefore you'd have to move everything. It just makes it more difficult to get in and out of. So splitting the doors into two, is a handy feature. And another little design tip, we put a magnetic catch. So this is very cheap thing to buy. Magnetic catch on one side, little, little mag metal clasp on the other. And when it shuts, it just sucks it in, keeps it nice and neat, make sure that it closes properly. Get some handles. These, these handles came in a pack of 10, really inexpensive, but just a nice quality look. Made it, makes it feel a, bit more at market just in keeping with the rest of the room so let's have a look over towards the ensuite same fittings same handle same door just gives it that quality feel so when you look at the we've got the main door to the room matches looks nice so one thing to work on here which way to open your door so situation of the door is always key We've fitted our door in the middle of the room. The reason for that is that we're maximizing the space. So this ensuite is only 1.5 meters deep. The reason we wanted to minimize it was to give maximum floor space. So we've got maximum usable space. 1.5 meters is enough to build an ensuite. It's two meters wide. We've put the door in the middle. So you'll see as we open the door, the benefit of that is that we're able to do a full walk-in shower to the left. So the door opens out, which again is very important, gives us more space, just allows us to use all the floor space in there without having to worry about the door swinging in. And then because the door's in the middle, we're able to set the whole left-hand side to make a shower. So this shower, the full width of the room is 1.5. This shower tray is 1.2 meters deep. So we've got about a 300 millimeter section at the rear. So if we go in, we can see we've got about 300 millimeters of tile here, which is uh, one tile. So 1.2 meters, it's, that's a big shower. So it's nice, it's luxurious. We've gone for a shower tray because it's much easier to manage 
and fit. Uh, you can get, you can make it a wet room, but we found issues with wet rooms. With a shower tray, you've got a raised up section here. Uh, it's easy to fit the plumbing underneath it, and it comes in one piece. It's much, just much simpler to fit, and it's quite cheap to buy. So we bought the shower tray and the shower doors. We've fitted it wall to wall, so you can see that the bar that comes in this goes from one side to the other. So that's all came, uh, we just bought that as a set. Then inside, we decided to put a wall-mounted shower head with an arm. So you can buy these, very inexpensive. Just get the plumber to fit it so that you've got the outlet at the top. And then down here, we've got a handheld shower, which is handy. Most people want one of these if they don't want to get their hair wet. And then we've got a Hudson Reed shower controller, thermostatic valve. So it's got three dials, one for the temperature, one for the power and one to select to go for handheld or for overhead. And because we had this 300 mil deep, deep area, we decided to put some storage in. So we built a really nice storage shelf here. We put some tr chrome trim around it to give it a nice finish on the edge. Put silicon inside, keep it nice and waterproof. And that's a really big storage area to put all of your shower gels and shampoos and everything else. And then because we had extra space, we decided to put a decorative area above. We put some lights in it. These are decking lights, which we put in here, the waterproof. And that's somewhere where you might want to put a feature. You could put the plant or some candles or something, something just to make the, the area feel a bit more uh, upmarket. In terms of tiling in here, we've gone for polished porcelain. These are 600 by 300s and they're laid horizontally in a slab format. To break it up, we put a mosaic in. This comes in a, in a 300 by 300 sheet. So we've just cut out two, put them, and they go all the way around the bathroom. So to give it a nice feel, just breaks up the uh, gray tiled look, gives it a little bit more interest and looks a bit more at market. So quite a nice feature. Moving across to the sink, we've gone for a vanity unit. This comes as a, a kit. So you get the sink and the cabinet together. Uh, the benefit of this is that it gives you the storage. So we've got built-in storage in here, so you can have whatever you need, any cleaning equipment or anything else that you want to keep in here, out of the way, nice and clean and tidy. Comes with a nice resin sink. We bought uh, a single piece tap, not particularly expensive, but looks nice, modern, clean. And to go with that, we just got a silver bottle trap. So just gives it, again, a nice finish, looks neat and tidy. Uh, a bit better than the plastic fitting that you can get, only slightly more expensive, but worth spending a little bit on that. Alongside that is the toilet. It's a close coupled toilet, modern, clean, got cl soft closed lid on. Would always recommend you get soft clothes, just a bit more at market, just feels better and is much better to live with. Moving around, we've got the towel radiator. This is slightly more expensive than your standard chrome tile radiator, but I think it's, it's worth a little bit extra just to get something that feels a bit more modern. We fitted this coming out of the wall, so we've got angled valves on here. Uh, again, just looks a bit better than if it came up through the floor and you have pipework on display. So worth planning ahead when you're building it. You can see in one of our other videos, we've uh, gone into a bit more detail on that. And then finally in here, we've got the mirror. Now a mirror does not cost a lot of money to buy, but can give you an amazing finish. So if you look here, this mirror is a, is a meter high by about 1.5 meters wide. So it's filling the room. What it does, it makes the room feel twice as big. So as you enter into the room, you're instantly hit with the reflection of the radiator here and it just makes the whole room feel double the size. We fitted it flush with the tiles. So the tiles are above here, and then we've put the same tile trim that we had on the corners all the way around the mirror. And that gives it a really nice upmarket feel that helps it tie in really nicely. So really impressive, really nice finish. Just to finish off, we put a shaver socket in here. 
people don't really use it a lot for shaving, but they do use it for charging their toothbrush, so I recommend putting one of those in. And we've got a little storage here, area here. This has got spare lights for this lighting and also allows us to access the electrics behind that in the event that there's a problem with that lighting. So that's the end of the tour. Hopefully that's given you a few ideas as to how to go about designing your own loft conversion. You can see here, we've thought through everything in terms of how we were gonna do the bathroom, the storage, the details, all of the switches and sockets, the lighting, the stairs. Hopefully it's given you some ideas Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, bye.